and welcome back to The Sim. In this one, we're going to be jumping into SPAD.NET next in our new user series, looking specifically at the event monitor. Last time, we covered the data monitor. This time, let's look at what happens when the Sim is issuing events instead of just changing data. Well, let's hop into the TBM since we've got a few examples that will break apart. When we want to figure out what things to press or what things to manage with the SIM, a lot of times, instead of just data, we can also look at events. So inside of SPAD.next, what you're going to see on the left-hand side is, of course, our navigation tree. We want to go to the add-on section, and the second item down is the event monitor. So now that we're on the event monitor, to the right-hand side, we can start it, stop it, clear it out, save a current configuration, because once we start Xing out um, events, it will be effectively creating filters that remove it. We can also load previous, and of course, my favorite, we can undock it, thus allowing us to drag it off to a different screen, or even just leave it on top but allowing us to switch over to a different device. Let's go ahead and let's start up the event monitor. Now what you're gonna see is sometimes there's lots of events that are constantly being spammed. So one of the things you can do is hit the stop button and now you can X out or ignore this event. And so now once we've cleared these out, we will no longer have them spamming into spad.next. So jumping in, let's look at how the event monitor can help us. Fuel selector just set because in the TBM, there is an auto fuel switch and it's constantly every 15 minutes or so moving back and forth, but you can also press the button to toggle it. So here, what's happening is the fuel selector set is automatically going to switch it, pressing the shift button is sending the event to toggle it. Now here is a great example of where that button press, we would not be able to map using the exact same events and we would have to create a conditional event that was smart. And therefore, if I wanted to mimic the aux, um, the, the fuel, the shift button, what we'd actually have to do is create a button that had logic which is going to look at the current fuel selector state. And then based on that, it would pick whether it sent it to the left or to the right for the event. So there's an example of where in the SIM, these events or what the SIM cockpit is sending, it's keeping track of its own data and its own logic is looking at that button. So you'd be looking at the current fuel selector setting and changing it. Coming over here, when we turn the landing light on, you're going to see that that event actually triggers the landing light to set to one and the taxi light set to zero. So on our alpha yoke, what you're actually going to see, there are multiple events. So that landing light is currently, when switched on, it sets the landing lights to on. However, also when it's switched off, so landing light switches off, it has to check whether or not the taxi light switch, so the physical switch is set to one. If so, um, and the taxi light equals zero, then send the landing lights off, delay momentarily, and then set the taxi lights back on. So basically, that's the example where our switch for landing and taxi, because they're two separate switches, were both up. So if the taxi light was on, that switch is in the middle. If we set the landing light to on, it of course has to set that switch up, but it also has to turn the taxi light off in the data variable. So now when we turn the landing light off, it's going to check the taxi lights. And if the taxi light it switches on, well, it's going to go ahead and move it into the taxi position, as you see there. 
when we look at the event monitor and what takes place, again, inside of the sim, pressing those buttons and moving them creates a whole bunch of different events. And so depending on how complex that can be, we sometimes have to leverage both the event monitor and the data monitor to figure out what it is we can change and what we can send as events or what we can send as data. For anybody who's curious, usually the best way to figure out is if it's something simple. So let's go ahead and let's look at the nav lights. So we'll clear this for now. When we toggle the nav light on, so that sets the navigation lights to one and it toggles the recognition lights to a zero. When we set this to off, it toggles the nav light set to zero and it sends a toggle recognition lights. So again, this is one of those examples if we wanted to recreate it because this one is a toggle event, then when we were doing our nav light switch, we can set the nav light data or we can use the sim event instead. And so even though the nav light data is changing, the nav switch changes because the switch is programmed to, you won't see that in the data monitor because the data monitor never actually saw a sim connect event set. Instead of doing a change data value, we're gonna use the send simulation event. And now based on us seeing the sim connect, the nav light, scroll on down to nav light set. So we use the fact that we could see it over here, nav light set, we're gonna take that nav light set and we're going to set that to a one when the switch goes on. And for the switch going off, we're going to use nav light set. We're going to go with a zero. We're going to delete that action. And now when we move the switch, nav lights goes to zero. Nav lights goes to one. So we've gone ahead and we've recreated and issued the exact same sim event. And now that we're sending a sim event, instead of changing a data value, we see that event show up in the event monitor. So it's very important to understand that this is a sim event monitor and sending those um, K events and Microsoft events. This is not where you'll see LVARs or data variables. And so one more quick one to, to look at is the example that when we turn on and off, for example, the manual and auto fuel selector, there were no events sent. And this is because this is using the new B event system sitting on this switch and we can't get access to those B events. The switch itself has not been tied into the data. So what you saw a moment ago was even though we didn't send a sim event for the nav switch, we were able to change the data value for the nav light and that caused the nav switch to move. So that's great. We could change the data, the switches move, that's also acceptable. However, with for example the fuel selector, because they didn't give us that event, we actually can't control it with an event externally. Then when we went into the data monitor and we looked at the LVAR for that, so quick recap, we'll quickly jump into the data monitor. We'll add the LVARs. So it's automatically going to pull in the LVARs. We'll hit the trash and we're going to switch this. Now we can hit the last changed. Now the landing gear blink, this is happening nonstop. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. We'll clear this out. So as we're moving this, you're going to notice that the LVAR that used to work for that is no longer hooked up. So there used to be an XML LVAR for this. And so if we sort by, by name, there was a fuel selector auto and that LVAR used to change 
from this and it no longer does. And example, autopilot trims. So you'll see that that fired off the autopilot disengage toggle when it went to the middle position. When it goes to the bottom position, it set the rudder trim disable set to one, aileron trim disable set to one. So in the off position, you effectively need to use the autopilot disengaged. So you can go ahead and you can set that value. And then when we put it here, you'll see the trims are no longer disabled. And when it goes all the way to the on, the autopilot disengage is also no longer on. And it's funny that the phrase says toggle, uh, but a one and a zero will actually set that value. Well guys, hope you like this one. As always, please smash that like button. If you've come back yet again for another video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe. Come along next time when we get into some more fun stuff with Spad Dot next or just some cool simulator related devices. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.